Good day grade 11s, welcome to this lesson on equations and inequalities. In this lesson we're going to be looking at simultaneous equations. Now in grade 10 you did do simultaneous equations but they were both binomials and now we're going to get to slightly trickier ones. We're going to get to ones which have maybe a binomial, meaning something that has got two terms, in other words it's got a y and an x and that's all, and we've got a trinomial. So if you look over here, where is my pen gone, there it is, you've got y plus x equals 5, but yeah we've got y minus x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. So we've got something slightly trickier and we're going to be looking at how to solve this. Now, probably the easiest way to solve these two, and sometimes you're going to find it a little bit tricky to see immediately what to do, and it requires, wait for it, practice. The more you do these, the easier it becomes, but I'm going to solve both of these for y. So I'm going to call this equation 1, and I'm going to call this equation 2. And I'm going to rearrange equation 1 over here, and I'm going to go y is equal to 5 minus x. Okay, and then I'm going to rearrange equation, and I'm going to call that equation 3. Now I'm going to re rearrange equation 2, and I'm going to go y is equal to, I'm going to take everything else onto the other side of the equal sign, so we've got x squared minus 3x plus 5. But now do you agree, I'm going to call this 4, sorry, do you agree that since y is equal to 5 minus x and y is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 5, these two have to be equal. So therefore we can say that 5 minus x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 5, because if this equals y and that equals y, then these two have to be equal to each other. So now we can just rearrange this and solve for x, so we go 0 is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 5 and I'm bringing everything over to the one side so that I can see what I've got before I start trying to work out what I'm doing. So if I do that, if I take this across it becomes minus 5 plus x, okay, which makes it quite nice because then I've got x squared and if we add the like terms we've got minus 3x plus x becomes minus 2x and this becomes plus 5 minus 5, so that goes away. And now we've got this beautiful equation, we've got x squared minus 2x. It isn't quite a trinomial because there's no third term there, but do you agree we can actually take out a common factor of x here? So we can take out an x and we're left with x minus 2. So therefore we've got that x is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0. Therefore we've got or x equals 2. Awesome, so now we have two possibilities for our x. Now we have to find the y, the corresponding y, and the reason we have to do this is because we're actually, the reason you're doing this is because later on you're going to use this to find out at which point the graphs cu cut. Because I don't know if you've realized, but this dude here, he's a straight line. This is a straight line equation. And this here is a parabola. I'm really hoping you recognize these formulas. And what we're teaching here is we're teaching the mathematical techniques of finding out where these two graphs cut, okay? So at the moment, all you're doing is solving for x and y, but later we're going to be finding out the points of intersection of these two graphs, and this is the method that you're going to be using. So we can't just solve for x, we've been asked to solve for x and y. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to substitute either these two points into either of these two, and seriously, I'm going to substitute into the straight line. So I'm just going to change my pen color just to make it easier for you guys to see. And I'm going to go, okay, fine, if x equals naught, then we've got y, so when x equals naught, we've got y is equal to 5 minus naught, therefore y is equal to 5. And whenever you're doing this, you always have to give your answers as a coordinate pair. So you've got naught, 5, okay, and then let's just change our color again to do the other color one. So if we've got when x equals 2, We've got y is equal to 5 minus 2, which equals 3. So again, again, our 
point is going to be 2, 3. And the reason you want to do this is because if you just go, oh, look, substitute in there and just write down y equals 5 and write down y equals 3, we don't know which ones you substituted in, so it's not actually mathematically correct. Okay, so that wasn't such a scary question. Let's try another one. So again, this looks scary. You've got y minus x plus 1 equals 0, and y is equal to 6 minus 5x plus x squared. But that solving for y thing really worked the last question, so let's try it again. So this time we're going to again call this 1 and this 2. Whenever I do simultaneous equations, I immediately number them. So then, just to make it easier. So then, what are we going to do? We're going to solve this for y. So we're going to go y is equal to, and we're going to take everything onto the other side, becomes x minus 1. This now is equation 3. But do you see that this one is already a y is equal to 6 minus 5 x plus x squared. So we already solved for y here. Y is the subject of the formula. And this is y as well. So therefore, just like in the last example, we can say x minus 1 is equal to 6 minus 5x plus x squared. Okay, so let's get everything onto the one side and see if we end up with a pretty trinomial again. So 0 is equal to 6 minus 5x plus x squared minus x, and in this case it's plus 1. So then let's rearrange. We've got x squared in the front minus 5x minus 1 is minus 6x and 6 plus 1 is 7. Hmm, okay, that's not too bad. Okay, so if we look at this, we want to factorize this, but the first thing we need to look at is the factors of 7. And the factors of 7 are just 7 and 1. But the problem with this is to get to 6, these have to be opposite signs. So in other words, we would need to say minus 7 plus 1. But minus 7 plus 1 won't work because this is a minus and that is a plus, which this plus tells you that both the signs have to be the same. So this is not going to work and we're going to have to use the formula. So the formula says x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. a, just let us make sure we know what we're doing, is 1 b is negative 6 and c is 7 and now we're going to substitute in. So we've got minus b, so it's minus minus 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's minus 6 squared minus 4 times a which is 1 and times 7, okay? all over 2 times 1, which gives us a minus times a minus a plus, so it becomes 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared is 36, 4 times 7 is 28, so it's minus 28, all over 2, the 2 goes into this and leaves us with a 3, so that becomes 3 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 28, which is 12. So now we need our calculator. So therefore we've got is equal to, and let's get our calculator out. There it is. And let's move it across. Okay, so we go, it is 3 plus shift root of 12 equals 6.46. So therefore that is 6.46 or, or, if we get the calculator out again, we've got, it's going to be 3 minus the root of 12, and it becomes minus 0 0.46, minus, where's my pen, minus 0 0.46. Now remember again that this is only half the answer, we now need to find the y value, and again I'm just going to substitute into this easier equation, so I'm going to change my color of my pen, just to make it easier for you to see. So we're going to say when x equals 6.46, then y is going to be 6.46 minus 1, which is going to be 5.46. So therefore that point there is going to be 6.46, this pair, and then 5.46, right? That is the one set of results. And if we change our color again, 
let's just change it to oh, let's go for purple again okay now if we've got minus so if x equals minus 0 0.46 then your y is going to be x minus 1 which is minus 0 0.46 minus 1 which is minus 1.46 so this pair of answers will be negative 0.46 and then minus 1.46 so don't freak out if you get funny answers like this that is quite viable okay let's look at another example so this time we've got y is equal to 5 over x minus 2 and y is plus 1 is equal to 2x and I'm going to use exactly the same method but this time I'm going to solve this one for y I'm going to say okay fine this is equal to y is equal to 2x minus 1 y is equal to 2x minus 1 so now we're going to let these two be equal let's call this equation 1 that was equation 2 and this is going to equation 3 so we're going to let equation 1 equal equation 3 why because they both equal y so we've got 5 over x minus 2 is equal to 2x minus 1 so if we want to get rid of this denominator what do we do we have to multiply both sides by this so we're going to multiply this side by x minus 2 over 1 what you do to the one side you have to do to the other side x minus 2 over 1 so those cancel with that so therefore we've got 5 is equal to 2x minus 1 times by x minus 2 so now we have to multiply these out so you've got 2x times by x is 2x squared 2x times by minus 2 is minus 2 minus 4x sorry minus 1 times x is minus x and minus times minus the plus it becomes plus 2 and that all equals 5 now we've got 0 is equal to 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 minus 5 so we've got 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 so now we have to factorize this okay and what we're looking for is something that when they multiply together gives them or when they add it together gives them this 5 so let's have a look your factors of 2 are 2 and 1 right and your factors of 3 are 3 and 1 so either it's going to be 3 and 1 or it's going to be 1 and 3 and because we cross multiply in our brackets we're going to cross multiply here so we got 2 times 1 is 1 and 3 times 1 is 3 so that gives us 5 so it'd be 2 times 2 times 1 and if we cross multiply with this we get 3 times 1 so we 2 times 1 is 2 and 3 times 1 is 3 but the problem with that is what do we have to do we have to add them or we have to subtract them both to get minus 5 but this minus sign tells us that the both the signs have to be different the signs have to be different so we cannot have a minus 2 and a minus 3 because when we multiply that out it becomes plus over here so we actually have to look at the others let's choose this one so we're not going to be using that we're going to look at that so if we do this one now we've got 2 times 3 and we've got 1 times 1 now 2 times 3 is 6 and 1 times 1 is 1 and remember that our signs have to be different and if we go minus 6 plus 1 what do we get we get minus 5 so that works so the way we do this grade 11s is we multiply it out like that but we write it like this and we end up we want a negative 6 the minus comes in front of the 3 so it becomes 2x plus 1 x minus 3 2x plus 1 x minus 3 so you guys need to practice that to make sure you understand what you're doing therefore 2x plus 1 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0 therefore x equals minus a half or x equals 3 now remember again we're not finished what do we have to do we have to find the y value we have to find the y value so I could substitute that but that just is terrible so we're going to rather substitute into this one 
So when x equals minus a half, y is going to be 2 times minus a half minus 1. Therefore, y is going to be 2, well, sorry, those cancel and you got minus. So it becomes minus 1, minus 1, which is minus 2. So these coordinates would be minus a half, minus 2. And then if we look at the next one when x is 3, when x is 3, then you've got y equals 2 times 3, minus 1. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1, which is 5. So therefore that option there would be 3, 5. So when x is 3, the corresponding y is 5. Right, let's do the next one. Okay, so this looks a bit scary, but it doesn't have to be. So again, I'm going to make this this y the subject of the formula. The reason I choose y to be the subject of the formula, let me show you. If I make x the subject of the formula, it becomes minus 2x is equal to 2 minus y and then to make x um, be by itself we need to divide both sides by minus 2 and you see that you end up with x is equal to 2 minus y over minus 2, which is a fraction. And then we'd have to substitute this fraction into this. It's just terrible. So you're just making life difficult for yourself. So instead, I'm going to make y the subject of the formula because then I'm not going to end up with a fraction. So have a look at your coefficients. If, you're, if your variable has a coefficient in front of it that's not 1, I would rather solve for the other coefficient. So let's do that. We've got y is equal to 2x plus 2. So what I'm now going to do is instead of solving this for y as well, and again I would end up with a fraction, if I solve this for y I would go y is equal to 12 over x. And that again is just ridiculous. Who wants to solve fractions? So let's not do that. What we're rather going to do is take this 2x plus 2 and we're going to substitute it in where we see the y. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So therefore we've got x times by 2x plus 2 is equal to 12. If we multiply that out, we get 2x squared plus 2x is equal to 12. Let's get everything onto the one side. We've got 2x squared plus 2x minus 12 equals 0. Do you see we've got a common factor of 2? Let's get rid of it. So we've got x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. So how did I get rid of it? I just divided everything by 2. And then, so let's now factorize this. Okay, if you look at this, we've got the factors of 6, which are 6 and 1 and 3 and 2. So obviously 6 and 1 are not going to work, but 3 and 2 is going to work. So therefore we've got x and x and we've got 3 and 2 and it becomes plus 3 minus 2 because 3 times 2 gives us 6 and a plus times a minus is a minus and 3 minus 2 gives us 1. Therefore we've got x equals minus 3 or x equals 2. Remember what do we have to do? We have to substitute back into either this one or this one to get our y value. So I'm going to change color here quickly and pick a different color. So now I don't mind which one you do. Let's do this one since we originally substituted that in. So when x equals minus 3, y is 2 times minus 3 plus 2. 2 times minus 3 is minus 6 plus 2 so therefore that's minus 4. So when x is minus 3, the corresponding y value is minus 4. Or when x equals 2, y is 2 times 2 plus 2. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6. So therefore, when x is 2, the corresponding y value is 6. Okay, not too bad here. So this used a slightly different technique. Instead of letting both sides equal y or x and then letting them be equal, in this method we use substitution. And you can use either of those methods depending on what suits you.
Right, grade 11s, the best thing to do, again, is for you guys to practice, practice, practice. And just always, I am really stress it, it makes life so much easier if you substitute, I mean, if you solve for the coefficient that has, I mean, for the variable that has a coefficient of 1. Right, thanks, grade 11s, have a lovely day. Thank you.